Welcome to a discussion slash demonstration video on exploiting unvalidated HTML form elements. The slideshow will be available in the description. Some quick preamble. A basic understanding of HTML and especially forms will help you in following along with this tutorial slash discussion. Alright, so what is exploiting unvalidated HTML form elements? It's pretty common to hear about SQL injections into sites stealing data or compromising web servers. And because of this, when you learn any web backend programming at school, it's drilled into your head to sanitize any parts of the form that can have SQL written into it, such as text and password fields. However, many developers either don't know or forget about form elements that have hard-coded values, things like checkboxes, radio buttons, drop-downs, sliders, etc. So what can we do to make use of this lack of knowledge or forgetfulness? Well, as we know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is sent to our browsers, all of it. A developer no longer has any control over the HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. We can modify the HTML form values that might be unvalidated. This used to be a little bit of a pain, however now dynamic HTML editors are built into some web browsers, like Firefox and Chrome. This makes our job super easy. Because we target the drop-downs or checkboxes, it may just be possible to slip by the validation and exploiting the website. It's always important to keep in mind that developers can be quite forgetful. When you're given a certain time frame to get a web app up and running, you may forget some of the security side. It may even be that the developer doesn't believe that someone would try and attack their silly website. As a developer, you should always believe that every user is trying to attack you until proven innocent. Okay, now let's get on to the fun little demonstration and example. I've put together a simple survey on a local web server. The survey is of five movie titles from 2015 that visitors can vote on from one to five. Five being great, one being bad. The rules enforced on the user is that they are only allowed to vote once on each movie. So let's have a look and exploit the voting system. Okay, so I'll come over to this web browser here and we've got this little web app that I've got here and it's rate this year's movies. And these are the current movies up for voting. So we've got Kingsman, which is currently winning, uh, with an average rating of 4.6. And as we can see, it says, how would you rate it? And we have a little drop down here with 1 to 5 and a vote button. Now we've got Taken 3, which has got an average rating of 1.9. We've got Black Hat, which is an average rating of 1.5. We've got Inside Out, which is an average rating of 3.1. And we've also got American Sniper, which is an average rating of 3.6. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to uh, exploit uh, this voting system. So we have a look at how it works. So let's say we wanted to vote 5 on Kingsman, and we click Vote. And it comes through, and it runs, and as we can see, we've increased the average rating uh, just up a little bit, um, as there's obviously been a lot of people that have already voted on it. But currently, that's not going to really get the movie that we want to be at the top. See, we really like the movie Black Hat, and we really, really want it to be the one that's winning. So let's see if we can exploit this voting system. So in Firefox, we can open up the dynamic uh, HTML editor by right-clicking and inspect element. So we're going to inspect element on this uh, drop-down. Now over here, we can see that we're at this little form here that's our vote. So it's got a hidden uh, input type, which is of the value black hat, which is an ID. And then we've got this little select, and it's got the drop-down values. So inside of our drop-down, we've got the value 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as we've seen when we hit the drop-down. So if we hit the drop-down, we've got the 1 to 5. But let's say we don't want to give it the value 5. We want to see if we can get a higher value through there. So let's double-click, and it opens up the editor. So we can edit the values now. So let's change the value 5 and let's say, let's put in 1000. So we're going to essentially boost up our vote by a long shot. So now we can click off and it'll set the value to 1000. Now if we come back and we click our drop down and select the 5 value, which is what we've just edited, the option, and we click vote, it, nothing has gone wrong. And we can scroll down, and we see that no longer Kingsman is no longer winning. And we scroll all the way down to our Black Hat, we can see that Black Hat is now winning. And it's got an average rating of 17.89, which is way higher than it that should, than should be possible. But the system still takes it, and it wasn't validated. 
But if we say, let's say we wanted to try and vote again for our Kingsman, we want to keep voting 5, it'll say, nope, you've already voted for that movie. So we're just tr cheating the system and uh, sending through a higher value that's not validated. Cool. So we've got our favorite movie that's now uh, winning and our job is done here. So to summarize, as a developer, be mindful to validate any data that comes from a form through post and get. When looking at forms and testing them, think about what elements may be left unvalidated. And as a final note, it may interest you to know that you can inject SQL through this method too, allowing for some pretty nasty database attacks. So this concludes our look at exploiting unvalidated HTML form elements. I hope you got something out of this video. Hopefully this will stay in your mind when testing or creating HTML forms. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.